So I'm just going to really cover what's topical going on now. As you know, uh, we are having a COVID pandemic crisis. All of us are stuck doing webinars and things like that. So basically, um, the, uh, the, the, where, 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 do we, where do we go from here in, in, in retinal uh, laser treatment? So I'm just going to try and move my slides. Yeah. So um, in Malaysia, I mean, we've had three months of lockdown now, and uh, we are slowly getting back to normal. But uh, what, what, we, what I've noticed is that diabetic retinopathy is not going anywhere soon. And in fact, I feel that the incidence has increased because of us spending too much time at home watching Netflix and eating too much and uh, not exercising enough. So how are we going to manage all these cases of proliferative diabetic retinopathy? That's a big question. And as you know, in the past, uh, we used to do very heavy, large laser burns with the old style PRP, really destroying the entire peripheral retina and um, you know, causing extensive visual field effects. And while we managed to save the macula, the, these patients have extensive uh, visual field effects and uh, um, not very good vision uh, long term. Uh, but this is really the old style PRP. And the new style PRP now, we are talking about wide angle imaging, uh, wide angle fluorescein angiography, careful targeting of areas of retinal non-perfusion with the laser. And with the multi-spot laser that uh, we have nowadays, we can really complete uh, the whole PRP session in laser in one session uh, without requiring uh, further anti-VEGF injections. We have good long-term uh, preservation of the posterior retina. And this is really considered a kill to these patients with uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So one of the strategies that, um, that are available for us now for our diabetic retinopathy patients when they come to the eye clinic, there are many, many um, protocols written by the so many societies around Asia and the world about how we can reduce risk to ourselves and our patients coming to the clinic. But specifically for the diabetic retinopathy patients, uh, one of the strategies is really treat and extend. I think uh, you're aware that um, there's a treat and extend uh, regimen for anti-VEGF injections uh, as well as uh, and where, whereby you give the first injection and then you see them maybe at six weeks later, give another injection and then see them another two weeks after that. So uh, so we can do that. Um, we don't do visual acuity and intraocular pressure checks on injection days, so we minimize their, their interactions with our staff and uh, reduce the time spent in clinic. Uh, strictly appointment basis now. Uh, we don't. Uh, we discourage patients from walking in uh, unless it's an absolute emergency. Uh, for PDR cases, really, I think we've come back to the basics, whereby um, we really want to complete their whole treatment in one visit, if possible, with panretinal photoagglomeration, rather than having them come back uh, for many, many injections over the next two years. For diabetic macular edema, I think you should really consider the use of subliminal or subthreshold laser for those uh, that can require to allow them to extend uh, their visits to the clinic and reduce the need for any in extra injections. And finally, uh, I'm sure a lot of all of you are doing this. You've installed breath shields at your slit lamp and laser machines. And in Malaysia, for so certain, everybody wears masks, the patients, the doctors, the staff, uh, all the time. Uh, here's an example of a laser breast shield that Quantel has provided for all their laser machines. It's a very simple plastic device, and you just have to remind your clinic staff to clean it uh, with an alcohol wipe uh, to sterilize it uh, at the end of the day or in between patients as well. How do you do a, a fast and efficient PRP laser? Well, I think as Victor mentioned, you need an optimal wavelength, and we feel that a 577 nanometer yellow laser is the optimal wavelength. A uh, multi spot laser uh, and a very short duration pulse. Uh, comfort and ergonomics for the patient and doctor is very important and something that's often ignored in many laser machines. So when you're doing the laser, you have to be comfortable and not straining your neck. And really, I've never, I've never had given, I've never been required to give a, a injection of anesthetics to the patient, and many of them are quite comfortable with just topical anesthesia to hold the contact lens in their eye. So the easy red that Quantel Met has really three different modes: uh, single spot, multi spot, and subliminal. I'll talk about subliminal. Uh, a bit later on, but I'm going to focus for the next five minutes on the multi-spot function in this laser machine. And really, it's a very simple interface. When you switch on a machine, you just click on the multi-spot mode. And then the, the whole concept of multi-spot, which is also available in many other laser machines, is that 
you want to do gentle thermal treatment. So you're do, doing about 10 to 20 millisecond um, laser, which allows less heat, heat diffusion to retina and choroid. Definitely very little damage to the nerve fiber layer. It's extremely well tolerated by patients and I'm able to do a single PRP in one eye in under 10 minutes. Uh, so really, I think this is really a, a game changer. We don't have to keep calling up the patients every month for multiple laser. And certainly with a 577 nanometer wavelength, I find it very helpful as it penetrates the cataract uh, much better. Here's an example where a patient had extensive PRP laser over many sessions with large single spots. And on the right, you can see a montage where the patient had multi-spot laser and the laser scars are visible, barely visible, but they are there. And I, I think uh, you can conclude that the peripheral vision of the patient with a multi-spot laser will be much better than those with heavy uh, laser scars from the single spot mode. How does multi-spot laser work? Well, the concept is to deliver as many spots as possible in the shortest time possible. And I think uh, all the laser companies have to be commended for improving this uh, technology in the last 10 years. And this has become widely available all over the world. Uh, so we can customize the patterns that you want. Uh, I use the square, the, the three by three square most of the time, but you can have wedges, you can have circles, or you can have single spot. Uh, the spot size is fixed at 400 microns. Uh, the pulse duration is also 10 to 20 milliseconds. You can con control that. Uh, you can, the most important then, then you just control the power level and then uh, titrate it until you see a, a, a burn and then you can use that for the rest of the rest of the eye and complete the laser very quickly. So the way it works is uh, you can also titrate the, 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 the burns as well. So what do you do when you use your screen? I use a super quad uh, 160 lens from Vogue. You choose that and you can choose your spot diameter. So you adjust the spot diameter on the machine itself and it, then the, the interface tells you it, it multiplies the magnification factor and you can see the true uh, spot size on the retina very easily, which reminds you. But of course, you have to remember to input the correct laser lens that you're using. So now here you see the actual treatment interface, the size of the spots. You can increase the number of spots here. And I always go, I usually go by three by three. I adjust the spacing to about 0.5. And then, uh, and then you press the on button and you're ready to go. And then, uh, and then you fire away. So basically, um, the clinical benefits of the 577 nanometer has been published several, in several papers and we've shown that it's much better in patients with cataract. Uh, of course, in multi-spot laser compared with single spot, there's no, no argument there. You've had much better comfort and much faster treatment. And the, way, the reason why the 577 penetrates better than 532 green through cataracts is because the longer the wavelength of the laser, the easier it will pass through the cataract. But there's also a sweet spot whereby there's very little um, absorption by the xanthophyll pigment at the macula at the 577 nanometer wavelength compared to the 532 nanometer wavelength. And the last bit of this talk, I'm just going to talk a bit about anti-VEGF versus laser. And I'm sure in the last two or three years, you've heard plenty talked about about the DRCR network protocol S study which was conducted over two years and uh, comparing ranibizumab versus laser for the treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And more recently, Sova Shiba Prasad in London published her clarity study, uh, which was a clinical trial comparing uh, aflibercept versus laser for PDR. And certainly, without there's no surprises that anti performs very well for treatment of PDR, and also especially if there's combined diabetic macular edema. But this comes at a huge financial cost as well as... Uh, clinic costs for the patient, which has to come back every month or so for repeat injections for up to two years. Compare this with laser, which has been around for more than 40 years. And then from the very beginning, the diabetic retinopathy study published 46 years ago, to the ECRS study, we have more than 40 years of clinical evidence to show the efficacy of laser to treat proliferative diabetic retinopathy at a very cost-efficient uh, uh, function. And certainly, I think this is something that you all should bear in mind especially in the COVID-19 era where you really want to minimize the patient visits. And if you have a patient and you're concerned that they may not come back for follow-up visit, I think a laser would be definitely the first line of treatment. At least they've had the session of laser that potentially cure them from the proliferative retinopathy rather than give them, giving them an injection that only gives them a temporary cure, which may then flare up again. And one of these papers published a few years ago showed that in patients who had monthly injections of randomizer up to three years, you had recurrence of the retinopathy after the 
uh, anti-VEGF injection will stop. So up to three years, even if you keep going with the injections, if you stop the injections, you have re uh, re recurrence of the proliferative retinopathy. And this is something to bear in mind if you are considering treating a patient only with anti-VEGF for proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So here, you have a patient with proliferative retinopathy. If you treat them with a PRP laser, you give them a lifetime kill. Compare this with a patient you decide to treat with anti-VEGF, uh, with an estimated cost of two thousand US dollars per injection, uh, and then with a lifetime risk of rubiotic glaucoma. I think you know which one I'll be choosing. And uh, Lee Tae Wu in Costa Rica also published a review on this uh, recently, and he he commented that given the chronic nature of PDR and the short intravitreal half-life antibiotics in use, uh, these drugs may need to be administered. These drugs should be combined uh, with PRP laser. Uh, so you may initially give an anti vegf to calm down the proliferation, supplement it with a PRP laser, and then follow them up and see whether they need any further laser. If they have coexistent diabetic macroedema, without any doubt, I think uh, anti vegf injection is the way to go.